Today we'll be talking about abscisic acid signaling and its role in plant development. Let's review, shall we? Abscisic acid, also known as ABA, is an important phytohormone that functions in many plant developmental processes. This includes seed development, seed dormancy, and stomata closure. It is also commonly known as a stress hormone that responds to different environmental stresses including temperature and water stress to address plant growth. One important process that ABA regulates is seed dormancy, which is a state in which seeds are prevented from germinating under harsh environmental conditions. This means that even if all the necessary environmental conditions for growth are satisfied, a viable seed will not germinate and will undergo this process of seed dormancy. This will maximize the survival of seedlings by preventing germination under unfavorable conditions. ABA is known to induce and maintain this process of seed dormancy and inhibits seed germination. Abscisic acid is also involved in the closure of stomata. As you may recall, stomata are these pore-like structures in the epidermis of leaves and are made up of two specialized cells called guard cells. The opening and closing of stomata is determined by increases or decreases of solutes in these guard cells which cause them to either take up or lose water. When there are low levels of ABA, the stoma is wide open. However, the stomata are closed when ABA is synthesized by plants. ABA is able to trigger the closure of these stomata pores in response to drought conditions, which allows plants to avoid water loss through transpiration to the atmosphere. Now you might be asking yourself, how can a seed that is dormant help in the development of a plant? Well, one of the main reasons why we'd even want a dormant seed is to increase its chances of survival. Because as you will know, seeds need specific conditions in which they are able to grow efficiently. If they were to grow in unfavorable conditions, there would be a low chance that seed would grow and develop to maturity. Not only does abscisic acid inhibit premature seed germination, but it also gives more time for the seed to disperse. Since seeds are rather stationary, they require other means to which they are able to travel great distances. A gust of wind, running water, or maybe even a bird who digests the seed at one place and excretes it at another. These are just some of the reasons why plants are able to extend further than their original location. Now, when a seed does find a location with favorable conditions, the seed will finally germinate by the action of gibberellin, a hormone that is in opposition to abscisic acid. When it comes to the significance of, of abscisic acid in closing and opening of the stomata, it can all be boiled down to one main reason, the conservation of water within the plant. Now, remember that, because before we get into that notion, it's important to know that the stomata of a plant, which are essentially pores that are found in the epidermis of leaves and stems, have two very important functions. One, they control the entry of carbon dioxide into the leaf for photosynthesis, and two, they also help control transpiration. Now, transpiration by simple definition is the movement of water from root to suit, which will then eventually evaporate into the air through these stomatal pores. Only a very small percentage of water is actually used in the plant to either carry nutrients throughout the vascular system to regulate temperature and or to overall help in the growth of the plant. Almost all of the water is transpired out of the plant. However, when a plant is in a stressful situation like a drought, then we see transpiration become a detriment to the plant. If the plant cannot replace the water that it loses through transpiration due to a drought, then sooner or later that plant will wilt away. This is where abscisic acid comes into play. Because as soon as the right stress sensors are triggered, abscisic acid signals its pathway to close the stomata pores. This in effect prevents water from transpiring out of the plant and allows the conservation of water within the plant, and thus the plant sustains necessary functions to survive just a bit longer. But how does this happen? To answer this question and understanding the developmental process of abscisic acid at the mechanistic level, we must first understand the cellular biology behind this. Here, you can see the signal transduction pathway in two different scenarios during the presence of ABBA to the right and the absence of ABBA to the left. So, let's talk about the ion channels involved in this. 
In the presence of ABBA, we'll get an activation of these ion channels for the stomata to close, where without it, we'll get an inactivation of these channels for the stomata to remain open. Right now, let's focus on during the presence of ABBA. So under stressful conditions such as drought, ABBA will bind to these receptors to form a complex, in which will then inhibit this PP2C. From this inhibition, the kinase, SNRK2, is phosphorylated and therefore able to activate these transmembrane channels. However, SLAC1 also needs to be phosphorylated by the kinase CPK to be activated. And for this to happen, ABBA is also involved in a process to increase calcium concentrations to activate CPK to finally activate this transmembrane channel. The activation of these transmembrane channels is to allow these anions to leave the stomata's guard cells and depolarization to occur for potassium to leave as well. We then have a high concentration of solutes outside the cell, allowing water to move down its concentration gradient and flowing outside of the stomata's guard cell as well. This then means that the guard cell has a loss of turgor pressure and the stomata closes. But that's it for now. We hope you learned something today about abscisic acid and thank you for watching!